Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the AW Dynamite review. Dynamite tonight was from the Century Videotron Arena in Quebec City. And the show just ended. And Dynamite tonight, I thought it was a very mid-show, in my opinion. But tonight, on the show, we had Will Ospreay in action. He have taken on... Ketsuyori Shibata. We had two matches in the AEW World Tag Team Championship quarterfinals match where we saw the Young Bucks, you know, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson versus Private Party, Isaiah Cassidy, and Mark Wen. We had a women's four way match to determine who will face uh, Julia Hart for the TBS Championship. So it was Will Nightingale versus Anna J versus Chris Datlander versus Sky Blue. The other match in the uh, quarterfinal match in the AW World Tag Team Championship, you know, tournament, it was uh, Trent Beretta and Orange Cassidy, the best friends, taking on Mike Bennett and Matt Taven of the Undisputed Kingdom. And the main event, we had Swerve Strickland versus Kanosuke Takeshita. The winner of the match will be the number one contender to face Samoa Joe for the World Championship. But overall, Dynamite, just a very mid-show it was tonight. But anyways, let's jump right into the review. Dynamite opened up tonight with Will Ospreay versus Katsuyori Shibata. And this was a very good match here. This was an awesome match. This felt like a pay-per-view uh, quality matchup here between these two. Will Ospreay ended up making his way out first. And then Katsuyori Shibata ended up making his way out. What I liked is that they showed uh, the matchup that these two had when they were in New Japan back in uh, 2017. So I like that, you know, we got that. But match start off with both Osprey and Shibata. They end up circling the ring. Both guys end up exchanging holds. Shibata end up getting the upper hand. Osprey end up making it to the ropes to uh, break up the hold. And we had uh, both Osprey and Shibata end up locking up again. Osprey end up taking control. Of the match here. He kinched in a chin lock on Shibata. Shibata worked on escaping uh, the chin lock and he got to his feet uh, for a wrist lock on Osprey. But Osprey ended up taking Shibata down. But both guys were going uh, back and forth here. You know, very physical, you know, it was here between these two. So we had another lock up between uh, the both of them and they headed to the ropes. Osprey end up breaking up uh, the hold, and Shibata end up rushing uh, Osprey in the corner. Osprey started fighting back, and he delivered a drop kick to Shibata. Osprey then end up hitting some strikes on Shibata in the corner. He ended up launching himself to deliver another drop kick to Shibata, which forced Shibata to get out of the ring. So Osprey end up intercepting with a dive through the ropes to Shibata. Osprey then end up sending Shibata back into the ring. Shibata hit the ropes for a run and front kick to Osprey, and he ended up sending Osprey off the apron out to the floor. So both guys end up getting to their feet. Osprey end up going for some forearm strikes on Shibata, and Shibata end up responding with a strike of his own to uh, Osprey, and Shibata followed that up with a vertical suplex onto the ramp to uh, Osprey, and then he delivered a roundhouse kick to Osprey. So Shibata ended up going back in the ring. He sat uh, cross-legged. The ref ended up beginning to count for Osprey to uh, get in the ring. So Shibata ended up leaving the ring. He ended up bringing Osprey back into the ring. So Osprey was uh, able to start fighting back with, to Shibata. He ended up 
delivering a leg lock on Shibata. And then he started firing up some strikes. But Shibata ended up taking Osprey down. And then Dynamite went to commercial. Then when Dynamite came back from the commercial, Osprey ended up getting taken down by Shibata. Shibata ended up sending Osprey outside against the barricade. Osprey started fighting back at Shibata, and he leapt off the barricade to take Shibata down, which was pretty cool. So both guys went back into the ring. Osprey ended up springboarding off the ropes to Shibata. He ended up going for a cover, to which Shibata ended up kicking out. So Osprey was laying in some more kicks to Shibata. Shibata was back on his feet. So Osprey ended up laying in a series of forearms to Shibata, but Shibata ended up laying Osprey out. So Shibata ended up sending Osprey into the corner, started delivering some strikes to Osprey. But Osprey uh, was quick to respond. He delivered some strikes of his own to Shibata. So this ended up going back and forth between these two. Shibata ended up having Osprey in the corner. He was laying in some more strikes. And then he delivered a drop kick to Osprey. So Shibata ended up going for the cover. And Osprey ended up kicking out. Osprey then locked in an abdominal stretch on Shibata. But Shibata ended up reversing it with a abdominal stretch of his own on Osprey. And then he transitioned uh, that abdominal stretch into a flying octopus hold. So Osprey ended up managed to escape that. He ended up fighting back with a crescent kick to uh, Shibata. So Shibata ended up catching Osprey in midair. He took Osprey down to the canvas for an STF. So Osprey ended up managing to grab the bottom rope to break up the hold. So Shibata ended up going for some more strikes on Osprey. Osprey ended up getting back up. Osprey ended up hitting some strikes of his own, to which Shibata responded with a right hand to Osprey. So Osprey was just continuing to deliver strikes to Shibata, but uh, Shibata ended up delivering a massive blow to Osprey. So Osprey ended up managing to kip up for Insiguri. So at the end of the match, we had uh, Osprey. End up fighting back at Shibata. He ended up delivering a back suplex to Shibata. So Osprey then delivered an uppercut, which connected to Shibata. He ended up going for the cover, to which Shibata ended up kicking out. So Osprey then delivered the Tiger Driver 91 and a hidden blade on Shibata. So Osprey ended up going for the cover, and there you go. Will Osprey ended up winning the match. Overall, very good match this was. Very physical matchup here between Osprey and Shibata. Osprey is just absolutely awesome. Shibata is great at is great as well. And I liked the uh, technical uh, prowess and strong style, you know, being shown here in the match. And you know, Osprey ended up getting a big win, you know, here over with Shibata. So. Definitely a very good match it was. It was pay-per-view quality matchup between these two. But at the end here, we had uh, Shibata and Osprey. They end up uh, bowing at each other, showing respect, you know, to uh, you know, to one another, which of course is great. And then we had a video package. On Brian Danielson. It was looking at the career of him and is being deemed his final year as a full time you know, wrestler. So that's uh, clearly what's in the plans for uh, Brian here. And then we saw Renee Paquette. This was shot earlier where she was talking to. The Young Bucks, the EVPs, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson, ahead of their tag team tournament match tonight. You know, quarterfinal match for the AW World Tag Team Championship. So we had uh, both Matthew and Nicholas Jackson. They started running uh, Renee down, and they ended up addressing their goals for this year. 
You know what I'm saying? That they retired Sting and they restructured the elite by bringing in Okada and that they're going to look to regain the AEW World Tag Team Championship by winning the tournament. The Bucks end up saying that they promise lightning never strikes the same place twice and that they will defeat Private Party. So pretty much that was basically what the Bucks had to say. But the Bucks' EVP gimmick here is working a lot. And in my opinion, this is the best version of the Young Bucks. I like the uh, the change in attitude from them. And it's very interesting on how uh, the Bucks' gimmicks as the EVPs are playing out on TV. So then as Dynamite came back from the commercial, we cut to the parking lot and we saw uh, Okada, Kazuchika Okada. He arrived to the arena in his new Ferrari, very beautiful uh, Ferrari, you know, it was. So we saw Okada enter. And then we had the first match in the AEW Tag Team Championship Tournament quarterfinals. It was the Young Bucks. Matthew and Nicholas Jackson versus Private Party, you know, Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Wen. And, you know, this was a decent matchup here. And thank God that we don't have to hear, you know, Isaiah Cassidy and his moaning, you know, the, oh, uh, thank God they took that away from him. That, that they're not making him do that no more. Thank God. It was a joke and absolutely awful that they had Isaiah Cassidy on TV, you know, going out there and just moaning like, uh, like that. So the match started off with uh, Matthew Jackson and Isaiah Cassidy. Isaiah Cassidy ended up catching uh, Matthew Jackson with some surprise near falls. And he was taken down by Matthew Jackson. Matthew then tagged in Nicholas. You know, Isaiah Cassie ended up tagging in Mark Wen. So Nicholas and uh, Mark Wen end up going at it. We got a double pin that ended up getting stopped as the Bucks end up kicking out. Private, private Party ended up taking the EVPs down with some thrust kicks. The Bucks then left the ring and the Bucks both got dropped by Private Party. Mark Quinn ended up getting sent over the barricade by Matthew Jackson. So Matthew Jackson ended up getting taken down with a silly string DDT from Isaiah Cassidy off the barricade. And Nicholas and Mark Quinn ended up fighting on the barricade. And then we had Nicholas end up dropping Mark Quinn to the floor with a falcon arrow, which was great. That was a good spot there from uh, Nicholas Jackson. So the Bucks end up double teaming Mark Wen. They end up knocking Isaiah Cassidy off the apron. And then Dynamite went to commercial. Then when Dynamite came back from the commercial, the Bucks end up going for a double team uh, from the corner to Mark Wen. But Mark Wen end up knocking uh, Nicholas off. He ended up dropping Matthew on the top rope. So Isaiah Cassidy headed back to his corner to tag in Mark Wen. So Isaiah Cassidy ended up delivering some offense on the Bucks. He ended up invading Nicholas to take down, you know, Matthew Jackson. Isaiah Cassidy ended up pinning an A-side moonsault to Nicholas on the outside. So then Isaiah Cassidy ended up delivering a springboard crossbody on uh, Matthew Jackson. He ended up going for the cover and Matthew Jackson ended up kicking out. So Nicholas ended up getting back in. The Bucks end up taking Isaiah Cassidy down with an assisted power bomb. So we had uh, Nicholas end up going for the cover, and Mark Wen end up uh, breaking up the pin. Mark Wen end up taking the Bucks down, and the Bucks end up taking advantage of you know Mark Wen being worn down, and Nicholas end up hitting a German suplex, landing. Uh, Mark went on the apron. And so at the end of the match, Matthew Jackson ended up hitting Mark Wen with a low blow. And 
We had Matthew end up going for the cover. Mark Wen end up kicking out. So the Bucks end up hitting the EVP trigger. And there you go. The Young Bucks end up winning the match. So the Bucks are advancing in this tournament. But overall, I thought it was a decent match here. And obviously my prediction is that the Bucks are going to win uh, this tournament. I think the Bucks are going to be the new uh, World Tag Team Champions. Of course, you have Okada as the Continental Champion. And you're going to have the Bucks be, once again, the World Tag Team Champions. So the Elite is going to have all the gold on them. Overall, decent match it was. And then as Dynamite came back from the commercial, we had a little uh, vignette here from uh, Darby Allen, who was with Tony Hawk. And this was basically uh, both Darby Allen and Tony Hawk just promoting... Uh, skatepark.org, which is for people to go on there and support local skate parks. Darby Allen ended up mentioning that he's not going to climb Mount Everest because, of course, you know, he you know, broke his toe. So that's not going to happen uh, for Darby Allen. But that was basically what it was. And then we saw Renee Paquette. Renee Paquette was backstage. She was interviewing both Hook and Chris Jericho about the proposition that Jericho has for Hook. So Jericho ended up talking about having respect for Hook after their match last week. And, you know, Hook ended up offering Jericho any advice he may want. Hook ended up thanking Jericho for the praise. He ended up saying that he will accept his advice, but he also knows who Jericho is. Jericho ended up saying that he also knows who Hook is. And this looked like to, you know, tease like a alliance between both Hook and Jericho here. So it looks like that Jericho may have just formed another tag team with him and Hook. So that's where they're going with this. You know, we're going to have Jericho and Hook as a tag team. And then we had the women's four-way match to determine the number one contender to face Julia Hart for the TBS championship. We had Anna Jay versus Will Nightingale versus Sky Blue versus Chris Statlander. And Mercedes Monet was out there. She was on commentary. So this was just a okay women's match here. Wasn't great or perfect by any means. So Will Nightingale ended up overpowering Anna Jay in the corner. Anna Jay ended up managing to fight back against Nightingale. Sky Blue ended up coming in and you know we had a pinfall that was attempted. Uh, by uh, Sky Blue and Chris Statlander end up breaking it up. So Anna Jay and Chris Statlander were going at it. Statlander ended up taking Anna Jay down with a shoulder tackle. Statlander was distracted by Sky Blue at ringside. And Sky Blue ended up taking a pounce from Will Nightingale on the outside. So Nightingale then turned her attention to Mercedes Monet who was sitting at the commentary table. And so Dynamite uh, went to commercial. Then when Dynamite came back from the commercial, Anna Jay, Chris Statlander, and Sky Blue were all going at it. Statlander ended up taking Sky Blue down for a near fall. So we had uh, Sky Blue end up catching Nightingale, and Sky Blue ended up going for the cover. Will Nightingale end up kicking out. Sky Blue ended up taking... Uh, Nightingale down for the code blue. She ended up going for the cover. And Statlander ended up breaking up the pin. So Will Nightingale ended up dropping Sky Blue with a Death Valley driver onto the apron. So Statlander ended up getting caught by Anna J for a near fall. And we had Anna J end up delivering a kick to Statlander. To which Anna J ended up getting hit with a gut wrench powerbomb by Will Nightingale. 
Will Nightingale end up going for the cover? And there you go. Will Nightingale end up winning the match, and she is the number one contender to face Julia Hart for the TBS championship. Post-match, Julia Hart ended up blindsiding Will Nightingale with the TBS championship to uh, Will Nightingale's back. Julia Hart then turned her attention to the CEO, Mercedes Monet. And then she ended up regrouping on the outside with Sky Blue. So pretty much that was basically that. Overall, just a very okay matchup here uh, with the woman here. And I actually thought that Chris Statlander was going to win this match and be the number one contender. But they went with Will Nightingale. So I think what's going to happen is I think Will Nightingale's going to uh, defeat Julia Hart. Will Nightingale's going to be the TBS champion. And then it's going to be Will Nightingale versus Mercedes Monet. And the TBS championship is going to go to Mercedes. So I think Will Nightingale's just going to be a transitional champion. You know, if that happens. So I think the TBS championship is going to go to Mercedes. And then we have Renee Paquette. She was interviewing Dustin Rhodes backstage. Dustin Rhodes had, you know, nice uh, face uh, paint makeup on him. It almost kind of reminded me of, you know, Finn Balor's, you know, makeup when he used to come out as the demon. So the Butcher ended up cutting in and he ended up making a challenge to Dustin for a match this Friday on Rampage. And I went, and when I saw the Butcher was there, I was like, all right, this match is going to be on Rampage for Friday. And then he said it. I was like, oh, I'm right. So it's going to be the Butcher versus Dustin Rhodes this Friday on Rampage. Who's looking forward to that? And then we have a vignette with Timeless... Tony Storm and Ben Mankiewicz. Ben Mankiewicz, the host of Turner Classic Movies. And pretty much this was centered around Ben Mankiewicz refusing to repeat all of Tony Storm's uh, catchphrase. But, you know, it was, you know, pretty nice. It was fun. So it's cool to see Ben Mankiewicz there. You know, I like Turner Classic Movies, I like how he introduces. You know, classic movies, you know, at, you know, prime time. So he has good insight on uh, classic films. And then we had the second match in the AW Tag Team Championship Tournament quarterfinals. We had Trent Beretta and Orange Cassidy of the Best Friends versus the Undisputed Kingdom, Mike Bennett. And Matt Taven. So we had uh, also Chuck Taylor out there accompanying uh, Trent Beretta and Orange Cassie, while Roderick Strong accompanied uh, Mike Bennett and Matt Taven. And this was a meh match here. So Orange Cassie ended up charging at uh, Matt Taven. He ended up sending him outside. Trent Beretta ended up going after Mike Bennett in the ring. Mike Bennett ended up getting sent to the outside. Orange Cassie ended up coming dropping by from the top turnbuckle. So Mike Bennett was then brought back into the ring. Matt Taven ended up getting a tag to fight back. And Trent Beretta ended up catching Taven with a German suplex. Beretta ended up delivering another suplex to Taven. But Taven ended up backing Beretta up into the corner. And then Mike Bennett ended up tagging in. Both Bennett and Taven double teamed on Beretta. Orange Cassidy tried to intervene, but the ref ended up keeping uh, Cassidy back. So Bennett ended up sneaking in a pile driver, which sent Beretta onto the apron. And then Dynamite went to commercial. Then when Dynamite came back from the commercial, we had Bennett end up going for the cover on Trent. And Trent ended up kicking out. Pretty much during the picture-in-picture, picture, the Undisputed Kingdom, both Bennett and Taven, stayed in control of the match. So we had uh, Bennett end up fighting off 
or Trent ended up fighting off uh, Matt Taven, and he ended up making a tag to Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy ended up firing up with a flurry of offense on Mike Bennett. So we had Orange Cassidy end up delivering a stun dog millionaire to Bennett, and then Taven ended up delivering a knee to Cassidy. We had uh, pro- the Proton Pack by both Bennett and Taven delivered to Orange Cassidy. So we had uh, Bennett end up going for the cover, and Orange Cassidy end up kicking out. So Trent ended up catching Bennett for a near fall, and the best friends end up going off to uh, build up some momentum. We had Orange Cassidy end up tagging in Trent Beretta. Roderick Strong end up distracting both Trent Beretta and Orange Cassidy. Cassidy ended up taking out Roderick Strong on the outside. So Mike Bennett ended up getting in the ring. Chuck Taylor ended up keeping, you know, both Bennett and Taven from hitting the spike pile driver. Trent then ended up rolling up Mike Bennett. And there you go. The best friends ended up winning the match. They are advancing in uh, the tournament. Post-match, the Young Bucks end up uh, heading to the stage to stare down uh, the best friends, to which they're uh, taking on each other next week on Dynamite. So it's going to be uh, the best friends versus the Young Bucks in the semifinals of the other uh, tournament. But I have a question here. Where was Warlow here? How come Warlow was not out there to help, you know, his guys, Bennett and Taven, you know, to help them get a win? Where was he? Who knows? That's the one question I got to ask myself. Where was Warlow? But overall, just a very meh match this was. And then we saw Renee Paquette. Renee Paquette was backstage. She was interviewing Kyle O'Reilly about him getting a win in his return. So Kyle O'Reilly ended up continues to insist that he will go it alone to prove where he belongs and that he is going to wrestle on collision uh, this Saturday. So pretty much that was that. And then we had the main event. Swerve Strickland versus Kanosuke Takeshita. And this is for the number one contender to face Samoa Joe for the AEW World Championship. And this was a very good match here. We had Swerve Strickland end up making his way out first. He was accompanied by, of course, Prince Nana. Of course, the Prince Nana, Prince Nana was doing his dance. And then Kanosuke Takeshita end up coming out. Of course, Takeshita was accompanied by Don Callis. Don Callis was on commentary for the match. So the match started off. We got a handshake between Swerve and Takeshita. And that handshake ended up turning into a test of strength. Swerve ended up escaping the grasp of Takeshita. Both guys ended up locking up. Swerve ended up getting to the ropes. And he followed up with a roll-up on Takeshita, to which Takeshita... End up kicking out. Swerve end up going for an arm bar, but Takeshita end up getting to the ropes to force a break. Takeshita end up taking Swerve down, and pretty much he end up going back on the attack in the corner on Swerve, and then Swerve end up fighting back. Swerve then started continuing to wear Takeshita down. He up sent up Takeshita for a neck breaker on the middle rope, and he up going for the cover. And Takeshita ended up kicking out. Takeshita ended up fighting back with a brain buster. Takeshita ended up uh, laying into Swerve with some forearms. So Swerve started to fight back. Takeshita then ended up laying Swerve out. He upsent Swerve to the outside. And then Dynamite went to commercial. So during the picture-in-picture, we saw Takeshita. He ended up maintaining control of the match. So then, as Dynamite came back from the commercial, Swerve started fighting back. We got some strikes from both Swerve and Takeshita. Takeshita ended up sending Swerve to the ropes. And Swerve ended up sending Takeshita to the outside. 
Takeshita end up getting back in the ring as Swerve end up hitting a frog splash on Takeshita. But uh, Swerve end up going for the cover and Takeshita end up kicking out. Takeshita then delivered a strike to Swerve and he was sent up for a discus no. So Swerve evaded that. He ended up getting to the ropes. Takeshita ended up catching Swerve and he followed up with a drop kick. Swerve then rolled out of the ring to take a breather, but Takeshita ended up diving over the top rope, taking out Swerve. Takeshita ended up bringing Swerve back into the ring. Swerve started to fight Takeshita on the turnbuckle with some right hands. He ended up dropping uh, Takeshita with a DET from the top rope, which was cool. Swerve then ended up going up top for a sky twister on Takeshita. He ended up going for the cover, but Takeshita ended up kicking out. So Takeshita then end up hitting a reverse Rana to Swerve and then a blue thunder bomb. And so Takeshita ended up going for the cover and Swerve end up kicking out. Takeshita then end up decking Swerve with some more strikes, but Swerve end up catching Takeshita with a right hand. So Takeshita end up hitting a run and knee to Swerve. Swerve end up catching Takeshita by dropping him to the canvas. So Swerve end up going for the cover. And Takeshita kicked out. So Swerve was back up top. And Takeshita ended up rolling to the apron. So Swerve ended up delivering the Swerve Stomp to uh, Takeshita onto the apron. Which was good. So Takeshita was back in the ring. And he ended up countering a Swerve Stomp. So Takeshita ended up pinning a wheelbarrow and a power drive knee to Swerve. So Takeshita ended up going for the cover, and Swerve kicked out. So Takeshita ended up sending Swerve into the corner. He was looking to go for an avalanche blue thunder bomb, but Swerve stopped Takeshita. So Swerve ended up evading a blue thunder bomb. He ended up sending Takeshita face first to the turnbuckle, and Swerve ended up landing the house call. So Swerve ended up delivering a Swerve stomp. And Swerve ended up going for the cover. And Takeshita ended up kicking out. This is crazy here. So both guys ended up getting back to their feet. Swerve delivered a headbutt to, the, to Takeshita. Takeshita came back, delivered a knee to Swerve. But Swerve ended up hitting the stomp. So Swerve ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Swerve Strickland ended up winning the match. And Swerve is now the number one contender to face Samoa Joe for the World Championship. So, it cut to backstage. And Renee Paquette was talking to Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe was warning that Swerve is not that man heading into their match at Dynasty. So, Swerve continued to celebrate and Dynamite went off the air. Overall, this was a very good match here between Swerve and Takeshita here. Swerve being the number one contender to face Joe for the uh, World Championship. You know, that is good. Can't wait to see Swerve and Joe, you know, go at it. You know, for the title at Dynasty. Dynasty is shaping up to be a good show, in my opinion. But Dynamite tonight just thought it was a very mid-show. But anyways, that's it for the Dynamite review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. And I won't be reviewing SmackDown on Friday. So uh, there will be uh, no SmackDown coverage uh, from me. That's uh, you know what I wanted to get out there. You know, you guys are looking forward to the SmackDown review. There won't be one on Friday. So, but anyways, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all later.